Welcome back to the channel guys and in today's Blender tutorial I'm going to show you step by step how to make a procedural cycles brick material and the cool thing is here you can actually see if you look in close we have actual displacement happening here so it's not just bump on the texture but we're actually going to be running a displacement on it as well so this is a fun Blender tutorial let's jump in and I'll show you step by step how to do all of this in Blender 4.0 with a new scene open up in Blender 4, let's select our default cube. Let's go into our front orthographic view and in edit mode, we're just gonna scale um, our cube like this. And let's just make something that looks like a basic wall like this. Okay, so just flatten that a little bit. Then go control R and roll in a loop like this. Then come here to your loop cut and slide and let's give it something like 30. And let's come over here, control R. Let's roll in a bunch over here and then maybe a few over here. And the whole idea here is just to make something that we can subdivide or at least um, add like displacement to. So in that case, I'm just gonna also select the corners. This is optional, um, but I'm just gonna select the corners and then just go Control B or Command B, just to create a bevel. Tab back out and now we have a wall. Let's right click and go Shades Move. I'm going to just move it up as well. And um, this is also going to go into our UV editing workspace. And in our front view, let's just press A to select everything and then go U. And let's go project from view. And let's just scale it up over here like that. So now we have all of the elements. Let's go into our shading workspace. Let's go into our camera view up here. And if you want to, you can bring your camera in a little bit closer to your wall. And then go to your render settings and change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under the render, let's set the max samples to 50. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see our wall, but I'm gonna go shift A and just add in an area light like so and point it towards the wall and give it a strength of 350 and then just increase the size. Okay, so now let's select our wall and let's come over here. It should by default have material because we use the default cube. So I'm just gonna call it bricks. And let's come over here. We have a principal shader. And in 4.0, it looks a bit different than the previous versions of Blender. But all of the things we want are still there. So we're gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna go search and get a brick texture, quite obvious. And then let's take this, and we are in rendered mode, by the, rendered view, by the way. We're gonna drag the color into the base color of the principal. And at the moment, the brick here is not using the UV coordinates. So let's just come here to the vector and drag on it. And let's just type in UV. And there should be an option texture coordinate and UV and click on that. So now we have a texture coordinate with the UV going into the vector here. And now it's using our UV projection. And you can see, we can see our brick, but we wanna make it look a lot more interesting than that. So let's go shift A search and get a noise texture like so. And what we need to do, let's place it underneath the brick texture. We wanna actually combine these two. So we're gonna go shift A search and get a mix and get a mix node. We wanna change it to color. And then let's plug the colors in here. So I'm gonna plug this one in here. In fact, let's plug the noise texture, I think, into the top socket. And let's take the brick color and put it into B. And now let's take this result and put it into the base color. Okay, but we want to now go shift a search and get a color ramp and then place it over here on this cable and then let's drag these values together and these values here and if we also just want to come to the noise texture and let's give it something like 20 and let's also drag up that detail over here and the roughness. Okay, so now if you go over here and you drag the slider up here, let's go ahead and give that kind of like a reddish muddy brown color and this one over here we're going to grab it and let's make that even darker so something like this as you can see um, mess around of these kind of colors just kind of going for like a terracotta kind of theme here and then what we want to do is we want to get some bump on that so let's now go shift a search and get a color ramp let's place it here let's also take that result and plug it into here and then let's take this and plug it into the normal we're going to go shift a search and get a bump node and let's just place a bump on here and make sure that this is going to the height. And now you can see we're getting some displacement over here, or at least some bumps. So we're gonna take the strength, just drag it down a little bit, maybe even a bit more. So now we have our brick material, but still by no means is it looking 100% yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take this principal shader and go Shift D to duplicate it, drag it up. 
Then we're gonna go shift a search and get a mix shader, place it over here. And let's actually drag this bottom principled in the bottom socket and this new one we've duplicated, we're gonna drag it into the top socket, like so. And then what we're gonna do is let's just make this principal shader here just so we can see for now a bright kind of pink. And then let's go over here where our brick texture is and go shift a search and get a color ramp. Let's plug the color into here and then let's take this color and plug it into the surface and the material output just so we can visualize it for a second. And let's drag this white value all the way down like so until we have like a black and white um, thing going on here. And now what we can do is we can take our mix shader, plug it back into the surface here and then just take this color output from that new um, color ramp we just added and plug it into the factor. And now we can see um, wherever we change this to, that's gonna be the mortar color. Now you can just kind of come here and change it to something that you think looks like a good mortar color. Or you can come here and you can take this color output here from the previous one, plug it into the base color, and then go shift a search, and let's go U saturation and value, get one of those, plug it in here. And let's take that value down to make that um, darker. Or you can even make it lighter by bringing up the value and then changing the U. So you can change the U and values here. Completely up to you um, what you want to do with that. You can mess around with the saturation, but as long as you have a different looking one in the inside here. Another thing I'm going to quickly do is just go over to my brick texture and I'm just going to come here to the mortar size and make it 0 0.01, make it a bit smaller. And now to finish off with, let's actually take this output from this color ramp up here, the one that is the mixing the mix shader. Let's take that color and plug it into the displacement. Then go shift a search and let's get a displacement node. And let's place it over here and make sure that this is going into the height. And now we need to go to our modifiers, add modifier. Let's type in sub and get a subdivision surface modifier. Let's go to our render settings and change the feature set to experimental. And then back in our modifiers, let's enable adaptive subdivision. And then let's go to our material properties and then under the settings, let's go displacement. Let's change it to displacement and bump. And now we got actual physical displacement. Let's just come here to the scale and put it to 0 0.05. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we save. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop. And now let's go render and render the image. And here you guys can see we now have a brick material with actual displacement as you can see here. Now by all means, um, if you were to actually get yourself a better viewing angle with the camera and um, improve your lighting a little bit, you would obviously have nicer results. But this is pretty much how you can make a simple procedural brick material in Blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Check out some of my other content and I'll see you guys next time.